This video is going to discuss the most common cardiac problem worldwide, especially in the United States, which is coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease refers to blockages in the arteries around the heart. And the way the heart muscle works, the heart's a muscle, just like a muscle anywhere in the body, there's arteries that sit outside the heart. And there's three main arteries. There's one on the right, there's a common trunk, which is like the webbing between your fingers, and two arteries on the left-hand side. We call this the right coronary artery, the one in the front is the left anterior descending, and the one in the back left is the left circumflex coronary artery. Those arteries then fan out and provide blood to essentially a third of the heart on this side, a third of the heart in the front, and a third of the heart on the back left side. As we age, we all develop plaque in our arteries. Almost every human being, by the time they're 30, 40, or 50 years old, have some plaque in their arteries. And we can't avoid it. We can slow down the progression of plaque, but we can't stop that progression. The goal that we have as physicians is in primary prevention, meaning trying to prevent people from ending up in our office and needing something done, is to control risk factors as well as we can to slow the progression of coronary disease so it doesn't get to a point that a patient either has a heart attack, needs a stent put in, or needs to have bypass surgery. If patients present to us with symptoms, the question at that point is, do they have a blockage significant enough that needs to be fixed, whereas if it doesn't get fixed, they will end up having a heart attack. And that's where things like a stress test or a CAT scan or an angiogram would be helpful. And it's a physician's choice to decide on which test to do. If someone's having a lot of symptoms, then oftentimes we would go straight to an angiogram. If someone's having symptoms that only occur with exertion, we often do a stress test to try to reproduce the symptoms and take a look at the heart. Or CAT scans can assess how much plaque someone actually has built up within their arteries. The third type of patient that presents to us is someone having a heart attack. So if a patient comes in and they develop chest pain, the chest pain doesn't go away. If it's been 15 or 20 minutes, at that point, it would be very prudent to either call 911 or if you live close to a health healthcare facility, go directly to the emergency room because if you're having a heart attack, the most important thing is to get that artery open as soon as you can. And the longer you delay, the more heart muscle gets damaged. What a heart attack is, is as physicians, we call it myocardial infarction. If you completely block off an artery, then the muscle that's beyond that artery doesn't get any blood flow. An easy analogy is if you're flossing your teeth, if you put dental floss on your finger and you leave that floss on and it's too tight for too long, you notice your fingertip starts turning white and it eventually turns black. And if you leave it on for a day or two, then you'll actually lose your entire fingertip because you completely cut off the blood supply. Well, the heart's the same way. If you completely block off an artery, the muscle cells beyond that don't get any blood flow. And after about 15 to 20 minutes, those cells start to die. Once those heart cells die, there's nothing we can do to regrow new heart muscle. So if you're having a heart attack, it's very important to seek attention immediately. When patients come in having a heart attack and we identify it, usually what we do is an angiogram. Most centers have the capability 24-7 of bringing a patient to what's called a cath lab and we put either an IV in the arm or an IV in the leg and through that IV we have a catheter and we inject dye to look and see where that artery is blocked. If it's in an area we're able to fix, then usually we put in the stent. We have different devices that we can use, but that opens up the artery and restores the blood flow to the heart muscle. If you're in a remote location and you don't have easy... Ah, crap, I have to go back to the one. If you're in a remote location and there is no easily accessible cath lab, there are medications which we oftentimes refer to as clot busters that we can give patients. We just put an IV in and give this drug that goes throughout the system and typically what ends up causing the heart attack is a clot that forms in an area where there was blockages that built up before. And that medication breaks that clot up on the inside. So the underlying problem is often still there and frequently we will eventually transfer the patient to a site that's able to do angiograms and look at the arteries. But the immediate concern at that point is to open up the clot and restore the blood flow that can also be done with medications. Hope you enjoyed this video. Enjoy the day.